Welcome to Crook and Kipe Extra Innings on this off-season day of February 12th. We are, as players start reporting to camp, or it's February 11th, excuse me. Let me do some fixing up here. Let me fix everything up. As I put down the wrong date, forgive me. But tomorrow, players start reporting to camp. So camps are starting up, which means spring training's coming. And in two weeks, we will start seeing players playing actual games as spring training camp has begun. Now let's get on to this week's off-season news. The Baltimore Orioles have re-signed Craig Gentry to a minor league contract. And also the Orioles have signed David Holmberg and Elvis Araujo to a minor league contract with an will not and they will not be invited to spring training. Yomer Sanchez wins arbitration against the White Sox and will receive two point three five million this year. Rowdy Reed, Rowdy Reed suspended 80 games for PEDs in the minors for his and he is on the 40 man roster so that creates a unexpected vacancy for the Nationals Matt's I mean, Mets designate Matt Reynolds for assignment to make room for Todd Frazier. And the Royals sign Blaine Boyer to a minor league contract. And he did okay last year with a 3.51 ERA. And Boyer, Boyer's going to try to make the 25-man roster of a rebuilding Kansas City team. And there was a survey held this week about are MLB players overpaid? And the survey says 73% say that Major League Baseball players are overpaid, which does not necessarily help their case if they decide to strike in 2021. And with a with a or a possible lockout that's looming in the year 2021, so the pull of them being overpaid definitely does not help out their cause. Philly signed Ryan Flaherty to a one-year $1.9 million contract. And he will compete for a utility spot going into spring training for the Philadelphia Phillies. And he did miss the, a significant chunk of last season due to a shoulder strain. So he hopes to revive his career in
in Philadelphia this year. Blue Jays sign a minor league contract with Jake Petrica. And he has an opportunity to, to earn up to $1.3 million. And Zach Wheeler wins arbitration and will receive close to $2 million instead of $1.5 million this year. And the Cubs win arbitration against Justin Grimm and will receive $2.2 million instead of $2.4 million. And this year, the MLBPA is going to hold a spring training camp for free agents with, with as many free agents still unsigned. And this will be led by Bo Porter. No personal trainers are going to be allowed. The union's arranging travel, housing per diems, and et cetera. And camp will open on Wednesday and run until at least March 4th. And we'll see if some player, how many players participate in this free agent camp. And we'll see how many players hold out or boycott spring training. As J somebody like J.D. Martinez, who's really playing hardball with, with Boston, who's given him a five-year, $125 million contract and does not want that. And I really think J.D. Martinez is playing with fire by not taking that contract and could end up somewhere like Seattle if he is not careful with what he does. And it could give some free agents an opportunity to showcase and get signed, signed by a team during spring training. But also I could see... And also, we'll talk about this a little bit later... And the Rays and Sir, former Giant reliever Sergio Romo is going to return to the Rays on a one-year contract. And he can earn up to $2.75 million. And he did well last year for the Rays, pitching a 1.47 ERA. But struggled with the LA Dodgers last year. But the big concern with Romo is his declining velocity as he's 36. And he could be more of a middle innings pitcher this year than a late innings guy as his velocity has suffered. So I don't really see him being no better than a seventh or eighth inning man at, at, at best. But I think Romo's more likely going to be pitching middle innings this year for the Rays. The Toronto Blue Jays signed John Axford to a minor league contract. He struggled last year with the A's, pitching a 6.43 ERA and 21 to 17 K through base on balls ratio. And he hopes to and he hopes to rebound from last year's disappointment in Toronto, so we'll see what happens with Axford. As he fell on hard times in Oakland last year, so I wish him a lot of luck over there. The Rays signed Dusty McGowan to a minor league contract.
and the A's uh, defeat Kendall Graveman in arbitration. And he'll make only 2.3 million versus 2.6 million. And he was one of the pieces that came back in the, the Josh Donaldson trade. But we shall see. I wouldn't be surprised if Oakland moves Kendall Graveman this year since he is becoming arbitration eligible at this point. Braves defeat Mike Fultinowitz in arbitration and will make $2.2 million. And the big signing And here we are, the big signing for this week. The Chicago Cubs sign Who Darvish to a six-year, $126 a six-year, $126 million guaranteed and could earn up to $150 million in incentives. And that really goes to bolster Chicago's rotation here as he will probably fit as a number two or number three starter for the Cubs this year. And this is a really good rotation. Now you got Jose Quintana, Kyle Hendricks. I think Quintana will be your one, maybe less John Lester, possibly your number two. Your number three will be Darvish, I think, two or three. And then your number four will be Kyle Hendricks and your number five, Tyler Chatwood with possibly Drew Smiley and Mike Gu Montgomery coming out of the bullpen. So it, that, that, that was a really a win-win signing as it helps to both boot bolster the rotation and also it helps bolster the bullpen a bit. And I don't think Chicago's done either. I think they will go out and sign a bullpen piece sometime this week. And they could be paying attention to the free agent camp going on during this week as they do start start up camps beginning tomorrow. And then you're going to have now Milwaukee, they're going to have to maybe counter by signing either a Jake Arrieta, an Alex Cobb, or a Lance Lynn. The big concern, it would be nice if, say, Arietta goes to Milwaukee, but the big concern with him is that his velocity is really starting to decline. So I don't think he'll be the, I think Lance Lynn might be the better option there. And I think Lance Lynn could be worth, has more value than a declining Jake Arietta. And of course, Minnesota, that's another one who's probably going to be in the market for an Arietta or a Lynn now with Irvin Santana injured. So that really starts shaking up the free agent market now with Darvish off the markets and signed. And then, of course, L.A., they could always go out and sign another pitcher, but they don't necessarily need to. And I think they do want to get stay below the CBT, so I don't think the Dodgers are going to go out and sign another starter at this moment in time. So we'll see what happens. But it now does put Milwaukee under the gun to, to sign a top starter to keep up with Chicago. As Chicago now has a really good starting rotation. And now they're going to try to get Joe Madden some, some pieces where he can be a mad scientist out of the bullpen. As Chicago wants to bounce back from last year's disappointment of a year. And now on to Giants signings this week. We, Giants signed Derek Holland to a minor league contract. And that's going to be a really good, and I think that's a good okay signing. I think Holland could definitely be a bridge starter next year as number five. 
and it definitely gives Tyler Beatty some time down in Sacramento to develop as he's definitely he's definitely probably going to need another year of seasoning before being called up to the major leagues. And I do think Beatty is and I do think and, I, and it does it gives gives them another bridge option and also it tells me that Heston is certainly going to probably pitch out of the bullpen in Sacramento this year. That is if he doesn't win it as he's probably not going to win a starting spot in the 25 man roster. And then that also will likely put Ty Block back in the bullpen next year. And that puts two lefties in the pen already with Will Smith healthy. That's really good, good news there. And then certainly if Snelton shines in spring training, you could certainly have three lefties out of the Giants bullpen this next year, which is a really good considering the two lefties we had last year were, t were not all that wonderful. Stephen O'Kurt, he's maybe a career. O'Kurt's just never been able to have his command and stuff translate to the major leagues yet. And then Josh Osich, another one who's just been unable to, unable to solve major league bats at this point. And I wouldn't be totally surprised if if they if O'Kurt and Osich are maybe released after spring training or if they're at least designated for assignment so that but that Holland signing certainly helps uh definitely with some of the bullpen issues next year and could go a long way towards addressing some of these bullpen issues. So we shall see how that works out. on that. I think it could be really good. And then good news for Tampa Bay. It looks like the Rays have decided on a ballpark site in Tampa. Their preferred site is in Tampa somewhere. Let's scroll down to that. And their preferred site is on the Wybor City City neighborhood of Tampa near the Channel District. And a hello to Von Hook. And a specifically a site on the outskirts of the Wybor City neighborhood near the Channel District. Now they will have a design on the new Paul Park that could follow in the future. And the new site it would be more accessible to fans in Tampa than having to travel to St. Pete for games, which is really good there. And this is a good st a step forward towards an interminable process at a ballpark that is very dumpy over there in St. Petersburg at Tropicana Field. And hopefully this could translate to better attendance for Tampa if they can get, de get the funding correct, get the funding right on it. But also, Stu, yeah, Stu Sternberg's going to have to try to get some private backers to help fund a ballpark. As I don't know if Hillsborough County is going to be in any mood to help fund a publicly fund a ballpark in Tampa or not. But they also need to get fans in the seats and make Tampa the Rays exciting. But if this uh, stadium deal falls through in Tampa, you could see the Rays. Maybe go to Montreal. The con of Montreal is attendance was never all that wonderful in Montreal either. Another possible site might be Orlando. I think Orlando could definitely hold a Major League Baseball franchise if the Rays plans for a new ballpark fall through in Tampa. I certainly think Orlando could definitely hold a ballpark and they definitely have a good following with the Magic fans. And, of course, you're near Disney World, so it's a tourist destination. And I certainly think baseball would work in Orlando if, if this Tampa Stadium does not work out. 
But you also have to think back to the situation the Oakland A's had with their ballpark. They preferred the Peralta College site. And then the and then the faculty and stuff. They the, then the school decided to stop negotiations and now they're looking probably at the Coliseum site or more likely the Howard Terminal site, which is not gonna be all that accessible if they end up at Howard Terminal. But we'll see what happens with that. But then moving to a new site or anything. And their lease at Tropicana Field is till 2027. So there's plenty of time for the Rays to try to get a ballpark deal done in Tampa. And hopefully the Ebor City neighborhood near the, Ch the Channel District ballpark works out well for the Rays. And that could be a really good thing there. Now on to the Giants. They are retiring a number. They are retiring Barry Bonds' number this year. And I was never truly a big fan of Barry Bonds. He, he cheated. He definitely used steroids in his time, and he was lucky, lucky he wasn't suspended at his time. But he... He and then he, of course, he holds the all-time home run record with 760 something home runs, 763 or something like that, and that's with an asterisk. And then you've got the 73 home runs back in the early 2000s with an asterisk there too. But and then what was worse about Barry Bonds? He was a cancer in the locker room. He did not, he was not good with other players. He managed to get Jeff Kent ran out of the, the ran out of town. Him and Jeff Kent never got along. And I just, I never liked Barry Bonds. He was, he was very egotistical and I never, and he was, it was more about Barry Bonds than the giants. But I just, I, and also hit all of his stats happened during the steroid era. And, and the, the press is definitely right to keep him out of the Hall of Fame. He should never be allowed to play in the Hall of Fame. Barry Brock Bonds is a fraud. And if, he, if number 25 is going to be retired, they should put an asterisk next to his jersey. And I hope Barry Bonds, maybe he's gotten a little better attitude since retiring. But I just, I can't forgive him for all the, can't. he was a cancer in the locker room. He, and I can't really, and he's the reason why Jeff Kent left the Giants. And I thought Jeff Kent was a better player than Bonds. Bonds was a selfish, egotist egotistical player who cared about Barry Bonds and nobody else. And I don't think he deserves his number to be retired. He does not deserve the home run record. He does not deserve the all time home run record. And I'm just, I'm very disappointed with the giants front office to retire his number. And, and you know what? The Giants are going to make it, make profit off of it. That's all sometimes the ownership cares about is profit. And they're going to give this big, this asshole of an eagle, of an ego, one more opportunity. That's all it is for me. According to me, I just, I'm, I've never liked Bonds. I'm sorry, Giants fans, but I've never liked Barry Bonds. And he does not deserve to have his number retired. All right, we got a question here about will the Rays relocate to Carolina? You know, Charlotte's not a bad idea. I think it could it could work if say Orlando does not work out. But I think, you know, you got I I wouldn't Charlotte could definitely support a major league franchise and that could be an option for relocation if say Tampa nor Orlando work out for ballpark sites. I certainly think or Charlotte could be a 
could be a really good baseball market. And you could have a good rivalry with the Nationals and, and the Orioles if that were to occur. And now to the other thing that's going to be going on next. In, in, I think this year is going to be the last year the Indians will have Chief Wahoo as their mascot. They have made the decision under public, under peer pressure of the public to retire Chief Wahoo. And this is becoming more and more of a thing in professional sports. Now that, you know, we got the Washington Redskins. And they find the Redskins name to be very offensive. And there's definitely a lot of pressure for Washington, for Daniel Schneider to get rid of the Redskins name in Washington. And a lot of fans, other fans found Chief Wahoo to be offensive to Indians. And Chief Wahoo dates back to the Depression ages. So that was disappointing there that they've fallen to peer pressure there. And then you got Chicago, the Chicago Blackhawks. That's definitely there's there's fans there that want the, them to get rid of the Blackhawks name. They think the Blackhawks name is offensive. And then of course you got the Atlanta Braves. And then you've got the Kansas City Chiefs. And that was the last name to use an Indian name was the Chiefs back in 1960. But we're reaching a time where, you know, you got towns and states and stuff that are trying to ban the, the term Redskins. And of course, Redskins is, to some people are considered a very offensive name. And then you've got a state, the state of Oregon, where they've banned all Native American teams. And I feel that they're, they're, they might be, might be a little too extreme, to my opinion. I certainly think Native, Native American teams were, were named to honor Native American tribes, tribes, not to offend Native American tribes. And I am kind of sad to see Chief Wahoo leaving. That, but these these Native American teams were grandfathered. A lot of these were names that were grandfathered since the 1920s, 19, 1930s. So I really just don't think it was ever designed to uh, offend Native Americans. And these names were more to honor the Native Americans. But what these franchises may want to do in the next few years is maybe to talk to these Indian tribes and ask them, do they, do they, do the, do the tribes find these offensive or not, or have it work where you're cooperating with the Indian tribes to get it right. It, I don't think they were ever intended to offend native Americans in any way, shape, or form, and were more designed to honor Native Americans. And it's sad that the Indians are going to retire Chief Wahoo under peer pressure. But we'll see what the Indians do. They'll probably go back to the sea in a couple years and, and go with that. But I think that just puts more pressure on Washington to get rid of the Redskins name. And we'll see what happens with that. Here in California, schools are no longer allowed to use the Redskins name anymore. And all of them have rebranded since, as California found it defensive. And we shall see what happens with the Redskin name. Have I been watching the Winter Olympics? I have intermittently. I've been busy a lot, so I'm trying to catch the Olympics as I can. I'm recording some of it too, so 
probably be watch I'm probably gonna catch up on the Olympics tonight after I catch up on the Sharks and Ducks game. Now on to next week. I'm trying to do another early show since we got UFC next Sunday night. So I'm trying to do another early show. And we are going to start the previews next Sunday. We're going to start off with the AL East next week. So we'll see what how what I've got projected for the AL East next year. And we'll see what signings happen that could that could change my projected uh, orders of finish. All right, you guys, thanks for tuning in tonight. I will, like I said, I'll be back next Sunday at an, or another early show since UFC, so it might be earlier than this. But I'm going to go catch up on the Sharks and Ducks game. And as they would say, since I'm going to watch Sharks, as they would say on Teal Town USA, catch them after the Sharks game tonight. Keep it real, keep it teal, keep it real teal. Good night.